Welcome to Impact. I'm Barbara Bravitz. Today, science and education, we're talking heart health. Our guest, Bob Elling. Bob, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Glad to be back. Uh, we seem to have coordinated our color scheme here today because, yes. of course, we're talking heart health. That's heart health, the color is red. Absolutely. Right? So it's all about the blood. <laughs> so um, last time, I just wondered if you could give us an update on the last program that you were here about, which was about CPR home CPR and some, some of the home kits that are available to teach CPR within your family or your office? Sure. We're, we're still pushing very heavily to try and get uh, the state legislature to uh, require, I know that's a dirty word, um, CPR hands-only CPR training in the, in the high schools. Um, basically, you get two years to get a law to, uh, through. Um, we got a little wound up at the very end because we couldn't get it through the, um, the State Assembly's Education Committee. But we're back at it again and we'll do what it takes to ma make it through because we know it'll save many, many lives. Right. And CPR is always a great way, kind of at the tail end of a not so healthy heart, of trying to get someone to the hospital and save them. But we're here today to take a different approach rather than dealing with the emergency issue of heart health. Let's talk about the preventative issue with heart health today. Uh, so we want to talk about what it really takes to keep you on the straight and narrow as far as heart health is go goes. Some of us, myself included, come from a genetic predisposition to heart disease within the family. There's really nothing we can do about that as much as I'd love to disavow my cardiac genes. I can't, but there's plenty of other things that we can do to promote heart health within our own lives. What's, what do you want to take a stab at first? Well, you know, the American Heart Association has a goal that we'd like to reduce um, cardiovascular deaths by 20% by the year 2020, but we'd also like to imp improve the overall cardiovascular um, health of the, all Americans by, by 20% by 2022. So that's prevention. And uh, a lot of this, basically, one of the ways that we're looking to do this is we've um, done some research and we've identified what good health is. I, ironically, nobody ever did that. Uh, so, <laughs> Hard to believe so in this day and age. No, I know. It's, so we've broken it down. Um, we have what we refer to this as life's simple seven. Okay. Life's simple seven basically is uh, our seven uh, I seven uh, specific parameters. Basically, there's four behaviors and there's three uh, metrics that can be measured. Okay. So, you want to take the first one? What about smoking? Okay. Well, so if we, if we hit them uh, one at a time, um, basically, as far as smoking is concerned, um, tobacco smoke is the single most preventable uh, cause of death in the United States. So, you know, I mean, I'd like to say that's a no-brainer, but at the same time, I, you know, I understand there are fo folks out there that are addicted to nicotine and need, a lot, and need some help, need some help. But the bottom line is they have to, we've got to get them to stop smoking. What if so. they say they've tried <clears throat> to stop smoking in the past and, and they just haven't been able to crack that nut? Are there new therapies out there, new approaches that we're taking to stopping smoking? Well, uh, you know the the, the state has uh, there's um, the state has a tobacco control program. They have they offer a lot of advice. They offer uh, you know the patches and they you know there's there's other strategies. But you know the bottom line is um, it's like anything else. You have to first decide that this is what you want to do, mm -hmm. and um, that's part of the reason why they have a you know some pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, television commercials that you've seen um, in our uh, in our state. They're you know, pretty they, graphic. But yes, they, they are. And I've heard some of my friends say, I just couldn't handle it anymore. I, I had to quit because if I didn't want that to be me. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I can be graphic too. I prefer not to. <laughs> but, you know, let's face it, you know, your clothing stinks, your house stinks, your car stinks. Everything smells like an ashtray after a while. And, um, you know, this is, this is not the 1950s anymore. We know better. Um, there's nothing sexy about pushing an oxygen tank in the shopping mall. And there certainly is nothing sexy about um, falling asleep in your bed with a cigarette and oh, gosh. dying that way. So, um, so it's time. It's time. People have to stop smoking. So. Yeah, and plus at $10 a pack, it's not exactly a small commitment to be a smoker. I mean, I'm sure uh, if you were to just calculate how much money you would save in the course of a year, that's a vacation. 
Sure, sure would be. Yeah. Sure would be. Well, so. I'm lucky to have never started, so it, I don't have to quit. So not, that, it, not that this too. is about me, but check. Yeah, well, that's one out of the way. So. <laughs> Here's the one I have to work on. Go for it. Okay, well. <laughs> A measure. Body mass or uh, losing weight. Losing weight, okay? Yeah, was, we could all lose a few pounds, certainly. Um, you know, it's interesting when you go to walk up a flight of stairs and you're short of breath. Uh, you know, that's very telling. Uh, nobody should be short of breath walking up a flight of stairs. So, you know, uh, if you go out and you look in a crowd. I was in an airport yesterday, and I was just, you know, people watching. And you just start to look around, and you, and you say, where's all the skinny people? You know, I mean, it's just what... Uh, what we've allowed Americans to get, all right? I was on a vacation a number of years ago in France. We traveled all over France because we chased the Tour de France. And um, I had my kids with me, and it got to be a contest. They would, uh, when they saw somebody who was heavy, they went and they stood behind him and they listened. And they were all Americans. Uh-huh. We, we couldn't, in 8,000 kilometers of traveling throughout France, we did not find one French person who was overweight. Now, I'm sure there are a few, but, you know, that's, you know, the way I they think, eat, the way they their exercise, they don't go to a gym. They, their life is the gym. Right, so, and they don't get in their car and drive to the gym. Yeah. They walk or they exercise as part of their everyday lives. Sure. So what can we do to make sure that we can incorporate exercise and physical activity into uh, our daily lives that won't cost us a thousand dollars a year gym membership um, and can, will help us lose weight? Well, uh, you know, as far as um, physical activity, basically, um, you know, you can start with simple things. I mean, park your car further, further away. You go to the shopping center, park your car further away and walk a little bit. Once in a while, there's nothing wrong with you know, skipping the elevator and go walking up a couple of flights of stairs. You know, that's all simple stuff. Basically, they say that we should be exercising vigorously about two and a half hours a, a week. Mm -hmm. So, you know, break that down into smaller units. Um, you know, aerobic exercise. You know, not going to the gym and doing this. Not but aerobic, snow. You know, oh, gosh. Yeah, well, that's tough work. But uh, you'd be better prepared to shovel the snow mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're walking briskly. Uh, on a daily basis, or if you're, you know, if you're running or cycling, or even if you're, uh, you know, you're out playing soccer, or tennis, any of these sports, the reason why is because it increases every time your heart pumps. That's your stroke volume, the amount of blood that it pumps out. So if if I go to the the gym or I do uh, uh, aerobic exercise three or more times a week for six months. I start to grow the size of my stroke volume. Mm. It becomes a more efficient pump. In the same way that if I work out my arm, my muscle will get more efficient. Definitely. My heart muscle will become more efficient, more efficient. in pumping blood because I'm exercising as well. So, for example, every single time your, your heart pumps, instead of pumping 70 cc's, I could pump 100 cc's. So my resting heart rate doesn't need to be 70 times a minute. It could be... 50 times a minute. And the way I look at it is, if, they, if I have a limited number of heartbeats in the rest of my life, if I can slow my heart rate down, then maybe I'll live a little longer. Mm. So. It's interesting, too, because you think of your heart. I can rest my arm muscle, you know, the day after I work out, and it'll be a little sore or whatever, but my heart, really, the only time it can rest is in between beats. It doesn't True. get the same break that the rest of our muscles True. get. True, so if we slow it down, it gets a little bit more A little of a bit break. more rest, yeah, so. if you think about it. One of the things that is important to note, though, is they say that people are um, uh, high-risk um, waistline. Okay, so for females with a, with a waistline over 35 inches, that's high risk, or, some, or a male with a waistline over 40 inches. That's so, high risk for uh, obesity. They have a, a high basal uh, uh, metabolism, uh, body mass index. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you can go on any app and you can figure that out. It's a relationship between your weight and your, your height. But th basically, that's about 30 pounds overweight. So, uh, you know, we, we, all, we all ought to know what our weight is. Get on the scale every day, focus on it, and then you can start to improve it. So, so. also, if you think of it that way, if you do carry your weight more around your core, that leads to a higher incidence of cardiac issues in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. it isn't just about butt and legs. It's really core. Yes. That's the big deal.
So you don't, you know, you don't have to run out and start running marathons. Please not. Okay. <laughs> um, so we'll be more efficient uh, if we have a better regimen. Um, there are other programs that the American Heart Association isn't involved in, like 10,000 Steps, where you can get a very simple pedometer, keep track of the number of steps that you take every day. And then, yes, that's going up and down stairs, but the more steps, the more aerobic exercise, the, the more toning that you can get done as well. So that's in a cheap way to get involved without actually popping for the big gym membership. It's hard to improve things you don't focus on. Mm. You have to that's focus on it. a great point. It, so. I love that. What's next? Well, um, we're getting deep in the list here. You know, a lot of it is what we're eating. Oh, no. Okay, healthy diet, eat better. Um, you know, we all could use a, a, some deep, deep uh, water fish a couple times a week uh, in our diet. A little bit less meat. You've heard folks say, uh, you know, meatless Mondays or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, when I was growing up, basically, we never had meat on Fridays. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it was a religious thing back then. But, but still, um, you know, there, you don't have to eat. Nobody says you have to cut it out, but you don't have to eat it every day. Right. More fruits, more vegetables into our, uh, a little bit less of the, the fried food, and salt. Cut the salt out. Is salt already in the food? I mean, we really have to, um, we're working on trying to convince them to decrease the amount of salt in the food supply in the first place, because there's way too much salt that's in the food supply. So what's a typical American have as far as salt intake in a day? Uh, they say about 3,600 milligrams per day is how much a typical American puts in. Now, uh, basically, the recommendation is, a, is about 1,200 or so, okay? Not much more than that. So um, what they've studied this, and one of the things that they found is if we could just reduce the amount of salt in the, in the food supply, even if we got it down to 2,200 milligrams per day as the average still, American, still about double in the a 10-year period of time, we could save a half a million lives. Can you think of any other way we could save half a million lives by just something as simple as cutting down something that we eat? I mean, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's it's simple. But, you know, what do you got to do? You got to get the people to start realizing that we don't need to pile on all that extra salt. Well, so. before the processed foods actually decrease their amount of salt, and if I think about it, 3,600 milligrams of salt is enough for the palm of my hand. Yeah. And that's what we're eating in the processed foods. So if, the, if it takes a while for the processed food industry to really cut it back, by adding more natural foods, green leafy vegetables, stuff that we buy in its native state, we can control the salt that we eat as Absolutely. opposed to eating the bag of rice that has the veggies in it that has tons of salt in it we make the rice we make the veggies we put it together same deal sure maybe a little bit more time in front of the stove sure but all, all in all isn't it worth saving half a million lives absolutely you know i, f I find a lot of times uh there's a lot of information about uh, healthy diets that are out there and some of it can get a little overwhelming you know um but i think that um, one example, uh, just to kind of keep it real simple here, mm -hmm. um, let me reference this. So based on a 2,000 calorie per day diet, all okay. right, obviously the amount of calories you need is really a function of uh, how much, what you do, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, if I'm going to ride my bike on the Tour de France, I need more calories. But um, so per day basically uh, at least four and a half cups of fruit and vegetables. Is so that's about that much. Yes. That's quite a hefty amount. Well, you know, have some for each meal. Mm -hmm. So right. um, at least uh, three one ounce servings of fiber rich whole grains. And then um, per day, once again, less, definitely less than 1,500 milligrams of salt. So more fruits and vegetables, less grains, less salt. Right. Okay. Now on a per week basis, mm -hmm. Um, at least um, two, three and a half ounce servings of fish, as I said before. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, no more than 450 calories, uh, uh, which is really 36 ounces of sugar sweetened beverage. So three small cans of soda a week or less, or juice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or you know, or better yet, you know, all the countries in the world that don't, that don't have a good water supply. America is one of the few countries we have clean water. We do. Try it. It's Drink great. some. It's you know replace all that all that soda and everything with water. And and the companies that make the soda also package water. So you know nobody's going to lose <laughs> here. So and just taking a simple lemon wedge and squeezing it in water. If you don't like the fact that water is just water, mm -hmm. it makes it 
a luxury beverage. When you take a lime or a lemon and go, it's yeah. wonderful. Sure. And then the other thing is, uh, you know, some nuts and seeds are good to add to your diet. Limit the processed meat as well as, uh, you know, choose fat-free or low-fat dairy products. So okay. dairy products are still good, but, you know, go for the fat-free ones. And we're not talking so. about the life of monks. You can have a little bit of ice cream every once in a while, but you just don't make a habit of it. Right, right, yeah. right. So, that, so, you know, the simple changes mm -hmm. um, go a long way. Anything that people do will, will make a difference. Um, another area that uh, we, we need to consider, too, is cholesterol. So uh, we're kind of getting away from the behaviors now, and now we're going to monitor how well we're doing with our behaviors through some numbers, and one of them is cholesterol. Yeah. Well, see, cholesterol is one of those things where I just don't know what my cholesterol is unless I... I when I go to my physician, I say, can we do a check so that I know what my baseline cholesterol is? So cholesterol, blood sugar, blood pressure, those are things that uh, somebody has to test in, mm -hmm. in me. But if I, uh, it is worth monitoring, and we want to keep cholesterol down. Now, one of the easiest ways to keep cholesterol down is, you know, cut out the, tran the trans, look at the, the instructions or little the, labels. The, right, the food and labels. And anything with trans fat, you know, get rid of it. Um, it's interesting that the Heart Association worked very hard to eliminate trans fats uh, in a lot of um, uh, public areas. Right, They've, the um, food's been labeled now for a few years for trans and for saturated fats. Yes, so, you know, that will help. Uh, we've also, um, uh, this started in New York City, but now it, there's a lot of counties in our state that are now, uh, for the food chains, um, you know, fast food chains and stuff like that, they're now posting the calories. Mm. Just that alone, when you walk into a restaurant, you look up on the, on the menu there and it says that that is 800 calories and this one's 600 calories, just, you say, wow, geez, maybe I'll get... A personal experience here, I went to one of the fast food chains, I won't tell you which one, mm -hmm. but I went to go order their salad thinking I was doing myself a favor. <laughs> And I looked at the salad, and it had double the calories of one of their small chicken sandwiches. And mm -hmm. I said, that's it. I'm going to go make my own salad at home, and I'll buy the small grilled chicken sandwich as an alternative just because right. I was rushed for time, as we all are, mm -hmm. um, because I had no idea that I was not doing myself a favor by buying the salad. Sure. Yeah, the calorie counts will show that the fat is there because I mean, fats give you kind of double the calories of of any other type of nutrient. So another indicator that we, we need to think about is our blood pressure. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody should know what their blood pressure is. Um, that's something that, you know, in all the, uh, uh, the sh there's lots of drug stores that have blood pressure units and stuff like that, but certainly you can get your blood pressure by you. When you next time you're in the doctor's office, just ask them what your blood pressure mm -hmm. is. We, the numbers uh, for uh, high blood pressure have come down over the years. All right. We used to tell Just people. Just like the cholesterol numbers. Oh the yeah. We used to tell down. people if your blood pressure was over 150, you had hypertension. Oh, but now it's come down considerably. We don't want your blood pressure to be over 130. All right. It should be 120. Mm -hmm. So, but the bottom line is you, you got to monitor it and you got to keep an eye on it. Now, there's things that, that drive everybody's blood pressure up. I mean, obviously <laughs> some of it is just the stress of life and mm -hmm. all that, but you know, Sometimes I think you got to know what your own hot buttons are and know, you know, who presses them and, and you know, try, try and avoid some of that. Um, the big thing, though, with blood pressure that doesn't help is, once again, it's salt. The salt is, is killing people with their blood pressure. So if we can uh, exercise a little bit more, if we can control our weight, if we can control the salt, it all will help bring it down to a reasonable level. And so. not only were the, will these seven healthy steps really... Uh, help us uh, live a heart healthy life, but we also have other benefits. It lowers our risk for diabetes, which is a disease that we can live with, but it's not a fun way to live. Uh, and it lowers our chances of stroke. So there are other benefits besides, oh, and less breast cancer in women if you keep on a heart healthy diet. So sure. it's not just one organ we're helping, we're helping many organs in our body. Oh, sure. Well, as an example, with the high blood pressure, you know, if, if you run your pipes, Okay, uh, your blood vessels at high pressure for long enough, if you don't have a heart attack and you don't have a stroke, you're going to ruin your kidneys. So, you know, there's another organ. We don't think about that, but you'll end up on dialysis. Mm. So, you know, who wants to? 
Who wants to roll the dice on this stuff? Absolutely. So um, the American Heart Association has a website where you can take a pledge, like you can take a pledge not to text in the car. You can take a pledge to promise to better your uh, heart health. And that website, we'll show it here on the screen, is mylifecheck.heart.org. And it goes over the Life Simple 7, and you can sign up, and it will send you reminders and keys um, to help you keep a heart-healthy life. So right. that's a great way to get started, if nothing else. Definitely. Bob Elling, believe it or not, we're almost out of time. Any last-minute comments before we take it to the end? Well, uh, uh, last things I can tell you is uh, we, we are working very, very hard to try and improve all these things because we want to see the Americans have better health by 20, all Americans by 2020, at least 20 percent, and we also want to decrease cardiovascular deaths by 20 percent and by the year 2020. So these are all things that will, will work. Well, let's keep tabs on it, Bob, and then you'll be back in the future and let us know how we're doing and come up with, uh, with new inspiration and new ideas for all of us. Bob Elling, thanks so much for being here from the American Heart Association. This is always great information. Thank you. You've been watching the Science and Education segment on Impact. I'm Barbara Bravetz. Thanks for watching. Proctors, bringing the best in arts, education, and entertainment.